Here we come, one human family. Here we come, one human family. To the moon, one human family. On to Mars, one human family. Asteroid, one human family. Jupiter, one human family. Saturn's rings, one human family. Uranus, one Neptune, one human family. Kuiper Belt, one human family. Pluto, one human family. Back to the Earth, one human family. Back to the Earth, one human family. Back to the Earth, one human family. My people, greetings and salutations. Happy Fantastic Friday! That's right, that's right, it's Fantastic Friday and I'm glad you're here. It's Fantastic Friday and I'm glad you're here. Pow, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher, and you know who you are. You're a future space explorer from planet Earth. High five, psychic high five, psychic high five. I'm so glad you're here today. I am pleased as punch. I love that saying, pleased as punch. Who doesn't like punch? Fruit punch, flavor punch. Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures and you. We're getting ready to go back to space. Pow, pow, pow. Actually, you know what? The fact of the matter is this. We are returning astronauts from the International Space Station right now. The uh, Colonel Bob and Colonel Doug are coming back on the SpaceX Dragon. Tomorrow, you can watch it. You can watch it, you should watch it. I would watch it. That's gonna be awesome. So it could be tomorrow your time. August 1st is the, is the specific time. Got some cool new stuff to show you. It's Fantastic Friday. And you know what we're working on? Space raspberries and strawberries. And some other cool stuff too. <laughs> Who doesn't like to laugh? I like to laugh. I hope you like to laugh. You know what? You know in space we're gonna be laughing because we'll be floating around and rolling and doing those doing those somersaults in the in the air and coming back around upside down all the way. It's gonna be amazing, and that's gonna be you. That is gonna be you. Maybe me, but for sure you. Maybe me, but for sure you. You, for sure you, because tomorrow's jobs are in space, so you get to you get to live, work, and play in space. You get to work. You get to live, love, work, and play in space. You get to live, work, play, and love in space. That's that's what it's all about. Being human. Live, work, play, and love. That's the whole human experience in a nutshell. So, you know what we're talking about today? Analog astronauts. Like I'm practicing my hand modeling. You've been noticing the last few episodes I've been practicing my hand modeling. Analog astronauts. Analog astronauts. You know who our favorite analog, the most famous analog astronaut in the world right now actually is Dr. Cyan Proctor, our friend. And she is, she just made it to be a finalist for the United Arab Emirate Smarsh, Mars Shot uh, Dream Contest, the, the Mars Shot Dream Contest, and, and Kevin Hart was involved, and she made it into the top 15 finalists, so that's very exciting for Dr. Cyan Proctor. Her dream is to bring what it is like to live on Mars, how to eat like a Martian, how to eat, uh, eat like you're, you're at Mars with dehydrated foods to the whole planet because we can save so much energy and, and create sustainable food, for, uh, food settings for people who don't have fresh food. So we can dehydrate food, it's a lot lighter and it's easier to ship. And it's, and it's shelf life is very long. So we can have, have people having healthy meals and healthy food by dehydrating food. And that is her Marshot vision, Dr. Sam Proctor. So you can live, every time that you eat, every time that we eat, 
dehydrated foods, it's, it's like we're practicing our space mission. That's why I always, I've been saying since the very beginning here on Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures that astronaut adventures, our astronaut training is analogous or like training to be an astronaut for NASA, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Dynetics, Boeing, uh, um, um, United Launch Alliance, um, uh, European Space Agency, uh, Indian Space Research Organization, uh, uh, Roscoe Cosmos, JAXA, uh, the, the Chinese Space Program, all of these different. So when we eat like a Martian, we are eating dehydrated foods. Like you have ever had dehydrated mangoes? I'm a big fan of dehydrated mangoes. Look, I got to show you this, guys. Guys, folks, peoples, my folks, look what we got here. Look what came in the mail. Look how awesome that is. It's our solar system. Recognize it? It's our backyard. There's the sun and there's Mercury, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Where's Pluto? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Where's Pluto? So the cool thing about this, okay, so like, let's get, let's get in on this. Mercury is the closest to the sun. Sun, look how big the sun is. The sun is big. Now, I got to tell you, the scales, everything is not right about this. It's just the order and it's a very cool, it's a very cool tapestry. So I was just like, okay, I get it. Because it really kind of has it right. It has the sizes all wrong. It looks like the scales and proportions are decent. I don't think that Earth is as big as that. I think Jupiter is a lot bigger than that. Even though Jupiter looks huge, it's a lot bigger than that. We'll look it up. But one of the cool things about it, check this out. Gimbal, over here. Gimbal, hi. This is the asteroid belt. Look, they got the asteroid belt. It, now, it's, it's funny. The asteroid belt looks like a, a big a bunch of broken uh, uh, peanuts. And it doesn't exactly, it's not as thick as this. But they did get it correct because here's Mars and here's Jupiter and the asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter. Now the distance between Earth and, and Mars is a lot. It's a lot more than that, that's for sure. Because it takes us six to eight months to, to get from Earth to Mars. And that doesn't, that doesn't even look, look how close that is. So that, that, does that look six to eight months? And remember, out here we're... we're uh, Pluto, look, look, where's Pluto? Look, look at this. Mercury, super hot, always one side facing the sun. This side's always the hot side, geo, geo uh, stationary, geo locked. Mercury, Venus, Earth, in the, the third planet from the sun, uh, in, this, in the, what they call the gold, in what we call the Goldilocks zone. So that's why we can have life here because we're in the perfect spot. We're not too far out where it's colder and not too, too close where it's hot. We're right in the perfect spot for for life to exist, and that's where Earth is. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, asteroids, Saturn, no, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And look, they even got the Kuiper belt right. The Kuiper belt out past, out past Uranus, I mean, Uranus, Neptune, out past Neptune, and then in the Kuiper belt is where Pluto is, and then there's the comets, because that's where the comets come from, is the Kuiper belt. So because I got this, and it was cool, and you know, I understand that Pluto is not a planet. It's a dwarf planet and all that. Remember this? From a long time ago when we were talking about the solar system. I kept it. How can I get rid of Pluto? We didn't have enough space on the uh, whiteboard, so I created a, a Pluto on the, on the side. Three billion miles from the planet Earth. We're adding Pluto. Look. <laughs> Boom. Neptune, Pluto. Now, now we're talking Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, asteroids, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Kuiper Belt, Interstellar, the rest of the galaxy, which is not really a song. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, asteroids, Jupiter, Saturn, 
Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Kuiper Belt, which is not really a song, but we'll work on it. You know what I mean? Because the song I learned was Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And I saw it on a YouTube video. I can't find that YouTube video. I don't know who does it. I'd love to find out because I love that song. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Pluto. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice addition, right? Kind of fun to look out, look out every day. I love it. It's always fun to bring new stuff into our lives. And when we're analog astronauts, because this is space mission training right here, you know, we got to make, we got to always have something new happening to keep the experience fresh. That's really important. You don't want to get bored out in space. I mean, when you, th when you think about it, oh yeah, the B word. Bored. No. No, we can't be. We're in outer space. Oh, look. We're in outer space. How can we be B word? Why would we be B word in outer space? It's too amazing. It's too interesting. There's a lot of science to discover and learn and explore. So we always keep, keep bringing in a little something new to make it fresh. That should be all of our life experience. When I was you, there was a saying that I was taught that if you stop learning, you're done. Game over. That we never stop until we stop learning. So it's important to keep learning. So we keep going. And I agree with that. So that's why it's good to have this new awesome tapestry. It's called a tapestry. It's a piece of fabric with an illustration on it. I think it's quite striking. And the sun, big mass of, of hydrogen exploding and creating helium-3 molecules, if I recall correctly. And uh, that, that's going to be advantageous in the future because we can use helium-3 to do cold fusion, non-radioactive non fusion, and produce energy. So the, 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 the side of the moon, there's a side of the moon that has a lot of H3 on it. We're going to mine. We're gonna, you are going to mine that. And we're going to use that H3, the helium-3, to produce clean, inexpensive energy for everybody. That's the plan. And get rid of this illusion of scarcity. Nice plan, right? And so that's why we are training to be astronauts right now as, a, as, a, as analog astronauts. So let's think about this word analog for a second, shall we? Analog. This word right here. A-N-A-L-O-G. Analog. 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 I love this word. So analog is like different than like a lot. Sometimes we're talking about analog recording materials versus digital recording materials. Analog is like mechanical, whereas digital is, is binary information. It's recorded on silicon and, and uh, memory that we record, um, we record information on. Instead of hard, hard medium, like we used to record all the information we used on computers on cards, on paper cards. We used paper. And then we, then we change that to tape. We use tape. We use uh, rolls of like audio tape. Like remember those, you, you ever see those cassette tapes that people used to listen to? We used to use cassette tapes for, for, to record data. And then we figured out how to put it on stuff like thumb drives. Like these right here. So these are digital media and uh, cassette tapes and stuff like that is analog or old record albums. Those are analog and analog means means different has different meanings and those are two different contexts like you know how you can say um, What would be a word that we have a different context for oh space space we could mean space in outer space or we can mean the space of the room so analog is, is similar to that because the analog means compared to or like, or analogous. Analogous is a cool word, look at this. It's analog with just an O-U-S. Analog, O-U-S, analogous. Analogous means like or similar. So analogous astronauts. We're analogous 
As an analog astronaut, we're analogous to regular astronauts. Regular astronauts do regular astronaut training, and we're doing analog astronaut training. We're training how to be, we're training how to be astronauts by training here on Earth. So our training is analogous or similar to analogous, 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 analogous to training, training to, uh, excuse me, not just training, but being in space. Training is analogous to doing the job. Like when you train, when we train for sports and athletics, it's analogous to actually playing sports. When we train for tennis, it's analogous to actually playing tennis. Like it's like actually competing against somebody in tennis when you're training, when we train. When we train to swim, it's analogous to training to swim for a comp for excuse me, swimming for a competition. You know, people that swim, people swim for competitions. I swim for fun, to tell you the truth. And, and I'm tall and long, so I'd probably have the right uh, body shape to be a swimmer type person. But that, it wasn't my passion, so I didn't pursue that. And if you have a passion, you should pursue it. And if you don't have a passion, pursue, pursue uh, find your passion and pursue that. Like somebody's passion was clearly art. And that is, that is uh, the passion they pursued and they, pr and they produced this beautiful tapestry that we are looking at today. And you have a passion for space and exploration. That's why you're here right now and learning about stuff like analog astronauts. So your training, which is like going to space, our eating dehydrated food, which is what you would eat in space, is training us to live, work, and play and love in space. Live, work, and play and love in space. That's what we are, that's what we're working on doing here, getting you ready for it. So it is fantastic Friday and you know what that means, we're gonna do something fantastic. I know what we're doing, I know what we're doing. I got some cool stuff on my Google. All right, check this out. All right, so first of all, space raspberries. Space raspberries. Remember we had space blackberries, didn't work out. And we tried space raspberries before, also didn't work out. And you know why I think it didn't work out? I think we put the soil in the wrong containers. Remember we used those flat containers? I don't think they drained right. I don't think that they, I think they dried out too fast. So we're gonna use some different containers today and we're gonna plant our our the seeds that we the seeds that we germinated remember check it out check it out now right about now look at this super ear baka 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 look at that so these seeds i am sure are germinated and then this side you can see this is from july 17th and tomorrow is is august 1st so today's july 31st so it took us about two weeks to germinate these seeds this side you can see is strawberries, and this side is raspberries. You can kind of see how I, how I wrote it on there. Oh, blackberries. This is blackberries, and this is, is um, I gotta be gentle. This is strawberry sides. I've never grown strawberry seeds. I, we got these from actual strawberries. We just took the seeds. Remember we took the seeds off of the strawberries and dried them out, and then put them in the, after we dried them out, then we put them in here, and you can still see the water Kept it moist in here, didn't let it get molded, kept it in a, a light spot, not a bright spot. And, and then this is what we have right here. So let's get our, uh, remember how we do this? We get our stuff, we got our stuff together. There was a cat in here, a cat left some stuff. All right, left some, left some fuzz. Cat fuzz. Love this. Remember how we do this? Wait till you see what I have to show you. Something super cool. Whew. Hey, my belt is funny today. It's not working right. Oh, there we go. I got one of those cool slider belts. It just <sighs> slips in. Whoop. This is a really great project to do at home. And as you know, I always say that it's easy to create a, a, a workspace by just cutting a bag, clipping a bag, and suddenly you have a nice 
clean workspace to make a mess on that isn't gonna mess up the house or wherever you are. Classroom, kitchen, bedroom. So see it's starting to spread out. It took me four cuts. One on the side and three on the bottom. So that's the bottom. And there we go. And now we got a workspace. How about that? Nice, right? I like it. I put this right here. Paka paka. And then got a scissors right here. We use that to hold down the space. Is there anything under there? No. Oh yeah, the handle. Okay, so then what are we gonna do? Well, we got to transfer, we get to transfer these. Oh, we need some soil. Here, come on, let's get some soil. Just so happens, got some right here. Picked it up today, just for this. So let's get our scissors. You know, you can always get help to do this kind of stuff. Depends on uh, who you got working with you. Hello, gimbal. Come on up over here. Hello, thanks. Pretty simple, basic stuff. It's like I'm opening up um, some rice or some beans. I don't need to open it up all the way. Gimbal, you over here? Hi, there you are. I'm over here, gimbal. Hmm. Ah, you found me. Look, I'm out here in the universe. This is where the universe is. Baka baka. So we got the bag open, and then we need these right here. Here, I'll show you what we got. So we got some yogurt containers. And we're gonna puncture some holes in there. Just wash them out, they're nice and clean on the inside. And this is gonna be our new, um, this is where we're gonna put our seeds, in here. Look at this. Boy, I told you I had some cool things. Wait till you see that. Wait till you see that. That was a teaser. Teaser. Teaser pleaser. Okay, cool. Okay, first of all, here's what we're gonna do. This is gonna be a little different because, now, you know, be careful. You don't want to poke your hand. I, these are not so pointy, but, and, and you could get help if you need to. You can, there's all kinds of different ways that you could do this. So, so that's a no. Wow, it's thicker than I thought. Okay, well, I need to get holes in here. So what are we going to use? Hmm. So I could use a knife, but, uh, ooh, I know what to use. I know what to use. Got it. Get, you know, I don't want to give you any bad advice. Ah, check it out. Little little scissors. So we'll see if it works. Let me get on a side. Don't want to don't want to get too crazy. Oh, it worked. Three holes should be good. Three holes. Woo. That was a different material. One, two, three. Okay, now there's drainage. We, we put the holes in there so that we have some drainage. Cause that, it seems like drainage, it was too thin so it dried out too fast in our other, you know what we used before? Let me see if we have, still have some. 
I'll show you what we used before. Check out our recycling. Look at the cool stuff we got in here. Look, here's our scoop. We're gonna use that for the soil. And then all kinds of boxes and little tubes. Vitamin C tube. Like, yeah. I always keep a, I, I, this is the clean recycling. I always keep this stuff because you never know when you're gonna, when you're gonna find some project. And remember, in space, we recycle everything. Keep that in mind. Very important. All right, so. Let's see. Let's get the let's get the soil. Be careful with the soil because this can get everywhere and spill and all of that. Look, I'm opening it up right there. Right there. And then, oof. Okay, so first of all, let's get some seeds out of here. I guess we can try with the strawberries first. See how they did. Interesting. We'll check them out. Okay, let's see what we got here. Huh. Hmm. I can't tell if they've really germinated. They don't look so germinated y. Couple of them really just look like they have strawberry on them, but they don't look like they sprouted. A little bit. Can't really tell. Oh, wait. Uh -oh. I said, oh, well, only one way to find out. I actually got one on me. Hmm. I'm not sure if they went. Let's check out the. Uh, uh, blackberries, see how they did. By the way, I got in, in touch with a couple of my friends I haven't talked to in a while. Athena and, oh my Google, did none of these sprout? But why? Why? Wow. Holy smokes, I'm really surprised that none of these sprouted. This is just like a space science experiment. None of these seeds sprouted. Okay, well, I have, that's okay. I've got another plan. Watch this. This is super cool. So that's not, that's the third time our space seeds have not worked out. But I have something really cool. Watch this. Check it out. Oops. Oh boy, you're gonna like this. These are alien plants. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is ginger. This is like what they make ginger ale with. It's a root. And I got a couple pieces and they just started to grow. Look how awesome that is. So you can see they're growing off this side right here, this, this piece right here. It doesn't look like they're growing off this piece right here. So look, I just take this like that. Now I've got this little plant right here. So then here's what we do. Watch this. What do we got right here? We can do the same thing over here. So we got that. Okay. Make it a little more conveniently sized. Now here's the cool thing about ginger. I got a utility knife. Look, this is my utility knife. I got this from Jamaica. Even though it says Japan. But it's a wooden handle. It's very cool. It's not too sharp. It's really just a utility knife. If you're sharp, if it was sharp, you couldn't do this. So then you can take I can cut this off. There's this piece of ginger, and this is good for digestion. Now, check it out. 
Look. All right, so see this? Look. Not sweet at all. Ooh, that's so hot, so spicy. Oh, wow. It's like red hot. Wow, it's so hot. It's so hot. Wow. That is hot. That's how spicy ginger is. When they say spicy ginger ale. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Now, I actually eat that all the time. But I was being genuine and authentic with you and letting you know what it's really like. Ginger is really spicy, and that's why it makes good spicy ginger ale. And, and it's very good for you. And that was just a tiny... you see how tiny a piece that was? That was a little tiny cut off of that. And that's how spicy it was. You know my teeth? If there's something in my teeth, you would tell me, right? Right? Remember, always be asking, how am I helping? Oh yeah, I was telling you about my friend Athena and, and Constantine. They are two friends I've known for years. Like I've known Athena since before she was born. And then Constantine, he came into my life, I think like right before my own son came in. Raphael is nine, Constantine is 10. And now I've got, I've got to watch them grow up. And now they're both really into gaming. Like, um, what was the uh, game that... They both play Minecraft, which is cool. But they also play a Robo... I can't remember. Robotech? Maybe Robotech. And uh, we were talking about a video game called Sky. And they're both kind of coders. And they're really cool. They live in Alaska. They're two of my friends. And they reached out to me yesterday. I got to talk with both of them. I haven't talked, you know, students get to talk to me all the time. So parents will open up opportunities where I get to have conversations with students and we get to talk about your future, like what you're gonna do, what your plans are and, and what you can be doing to make it go further. Like one of the things that uh, Constantine was working on was, oh, he's working on, oh, you know what? So it, here's the thing. I know we're in the middle of this ginger, but check this out. So Constantine um, has had grown-ups not explain to him that writing is the same, like analog astronauts. Writing is not right. I don't know why we call it writing. It's not writing. It's drawing. We're not writing letters. We're drawing, drawing letters. And if you don't like drawing, then well, how can you not like drawing? Drawing is one of the funnest things that we do. Holy smokes, can you imagine a time before? We used to draw on caves. Remember uh, the, that space cat that I used to draw? That I, uh, how did that go again? Okay, so then, space cat. Um, space cat had like a, I, see, I sort of remember space cat's nose, and then space cat mouth, and then um, the, this part, the chin, I remember that, and then the chin, the cheeks, space cat cheeks, and then the eyeball, and the other eye over here, and then this part right here, this part right here, and then the, 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 this part right here, the teardrop, kind of like half a teardrop eye. That part right there, the eye. And then um, down here, catch that up there, and catch that up there, and then cat. Ear, cat ear, and then right there, and then some shade right here, down to the nose, down to here, nose, and then nostrils, a little smile right here, a little mouth, and then um, some lines up here, and 
and some fur inside the ears. Fur inside the ears. So look, I mean, this is the thing. Uh, right, I, I didn't even have to think about it. And then like a little bit of hair right there. And oh, did, you know what we forgot? So funny. Whiskers, yo. Cat's got whiskers. Cat's got whiskers. Look, space cat. See it? Space cat. I just drew that. Yeah, and how I drew it is because remember, I practiced it here. So the same thing is true of letters. Letters are the exact same way. Like Space Cat's got a triangle shape. Well, what letter looks like a triangle? A, obviously. Oh, but you know what? V kind of also does that. So I draw letters. I just, like, I mean, who doesn't like to draw Vs? Oh my gosh, they're like seagulls. Or, or really like a seagull with a W. I love to draw Ivy. Love it. Love it. Oh, we lost the light. Look, letters are, letters are drawing. It's the secret to writing. Constantine, letters are drawing. Grown-ups don't tell you this. I'm a grown-up and I'm sharing this information with you. And you, and, and you, you're, you're, you who are not Constantine. Athena probably knows it, his sister. Raphael knows it because him and me practice a ton. His sister probably doesn't know it because she doesn't listen to what I say. So, but you listening to this right now can understand something really clearly. It's not writing, it's drawing or drawing letters. Like letters have personalities. Like look at the B. B is a crazy letter. Like it's got the little baby thing up here and then it's got the big parent thing down here. That's crazy. And how does a P even stand up? Look, it's got that whole thing. That's why R's are strong because you add that. A P is that with the brace. BR. And then what, 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 oh, B-R-O. Raphael's sister always calls me this. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Bro. I'm like, don't bro me. Don't bro me. O's are fun to draw. I mean, I like to draw circles to begin with. You practice your O's, you get really good at circles. Oh, wow. Love it. And then you could add an H over here. An H is like a house, very stable. It's got two lines, it's got that bar that holds it up. Oh. Then we're gonna put an exclamation point because that's always fun. Oh! Pretty good, right? Nice. So here, 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 this is a pro, this is a this is not a bro tip, it's a pro tip. Letters are not writing. You're not writing letters. You're drawing them. Don't tell any grown-ups. They'll go crazy. They're like, no, you're not drawing letters. You're writing them. Okay, I am writing them. Writing. But I'm drawing. I'm drawing letters. So, that, so Constantine's working on that. Raphael's working on mathematics, and Constantine is working on, on drawing letters. Because writing is drawing. So drawing a page of letters is fun. I will draw a whole page of letters. I will draw a whole page of A's. I'll draw a whole page of B's. I don't have to do it all at once. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. I don't have to do it all at once. We now return to our previously scheduled programming already in progress. Okay, here we go. The excitement. All right, so here we go. We got a ginger plant right here and a ginger plant right here that has grown from food. And this is how we will, we will produce food on another planet. We will grow food from food. Even though our raspberries and strawberries did not work out. That's okay. We'll try that again some other time. So then we get our scoop. Soil looks good. It's nice black and rich. Black is better. Black is better, black is better. All right, cool. So let me drop that in there like that. Just tuck it in there, just like that. You know, I'm gonna give it a little more room. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna give a little more soil room to grow because plants grow in soil as a medium. When we say soil is the medium, it means soil is the container. Even though we're using a container to put the soil in, if we just put the, the ginger plant in the 
empty yogurt container, that wouldn't be enough of a medium. It would hold the ginger plant, but it wouldn't provide it with the soil and nutrients that a plant needs to survive. So in space, we can't use, we, if I poured out soil like this, you know what would happen? It would just float around. So we, we get to use different things in space, like sponges, different material in space that helps things grow. That allow, it's, we di- use a different medium in space, a different growing material. The, mater- the, me- the medium is the growing material. A lot of sticks in this one. I don't know what that's about. I got this whole bag of dirt for only $4, so we'll see. Ooh, look at that. Look, I think that this plant is, ha- is happy. I'm going to use some of this napkin. Clean off the outside. Doesn't I don't have to, but I will. Cool. All right, cool. That's one of them. We have one ginger plant, space ginger planted. Get some more soil. more. Perfect. Even it out. Put our other ginger plant in here. It's pretty sturdy, really. I mean, I could knock that off and it would break. That would, and I would kill it probably, but that's not what we want to do. But it is, it's not like a soft plant. It's kind of firm right now. So we put that in there. Good looking ginger plant. And people use ginger for not just ginger ale. People use ginger for Chinese food for Jamaican food, for um, what else? All kinds of Asian food. Um, What else? Also all all kinds of Caribbean food, Bahamian food. Bahamians use ginger a lot. There's some food in the US Southeast that uses ginger. Looking good, right? We got two. I mean, like this is really kind of strong. So even though I bumped it a couple times, gotta be careful not to break it. All right. You know what plants need once they have soil? They got soil, light. What's the third thing that plants need if they got soil and light? That's right, water. Water. And remember, there's a hole in this, there's holes in the bottom, so the water will go through if we put too much in there like that. So that's a, in the beginning, like I'll take this outside and really wet it down, and I'll let the water run through. But that's pretty good. It's not running through, good. So it's holding the water. And then we'll keep an eye on our space ginger. Look. Look what we did together. We plant, we planted two space ginger plants. This is how we would do it in space. We would grow food from food. Like you can grow potatoes from potatoes. You can grow carrots from carrots. And you can grow carrot tops. You take carrot tops and you can't other, grow other carrots. However, you can eat those carrot tops. They grow into like a little salad. And then we even have some um, ginger left over if we want to use it for cooking or something. So that's pretty good. Not bad. Here's another whole piece of ginger. This is a ginger root. See how it looks? Here. That is a whole ginger root. So you dig it up, clean it up, and that's what they look like. And then you can you can uh, shred it and use it for all kinds of stuff. Oh, what about ginger candy? What about ginger frosting? Ginger cake? Ginger is really, and it's very good for us. It's good for our di- digestion. Even though, like for you especially, because your, your taste buds are so powerful compared to mine, as grown-ups, our taste buds aren't as strong as they are when we're you. So you, this would be really spicy for you. And you know, yeah, I got to tell you, paka paka. My son Raphael loves ginger. He loves it. And um, I'll have to, I've got to spend time with Athena and um, paka paka. And Constantine, and I don't know if they like ginger or not. Ah! Will you help me do something really quickly? Look what I forgot. My hands aren't dirty, so I'm okay to do this. Look what I forgot. Can you believe it? All the cool stuff we have now. 
This is very important because this is not just my symbol. This is your symbol. This is the mark of the human heir. And, and, and just because we get something new, like that awesome tapestry right there, doesn't mean we forget what came before it. This is very important. It's significant. It's significant. We call this the heart wing star, symbol of the human heirs. There you go. Thank you for doing that with me. I think it's really important because this is our symbol. You're going to go to space one day and you need your own insignia. And there it is. Speaking of drawing, that would be really fun to draw. See how it's done? First you draw your heart, then you draw your wings, one wing over here, one wing over here, and then you draw the star behind it. Star over here, and over here, and over here. And it's fun to do. There it is. That's our symbol of the next generation of space explorers from planet Earth, who's going to be growing space food like space ginger and space raspberries and space blackberries and space strawberries. So um, I did have a question this week. Who asked me a question? Let's, let's see. On this fantastic Friday. Let's look real quick. Thank you for the questions. My friend Chester messaged me. I haven't heard from him from the United Kingdom. I haven't heard from him in a while. Akshat won his hackathon. He will work further with Aselpois, Asel, Aselpois with further developing it and maybe even used on the moon. So Akshat did a hackathon. Oh, the company, Aslapios. As Aslapios. Constantine and Athena are Greek, so maybe that's Aslapios is Greek. And so then uh, Akshat won his hackathon. Congratulations, Akshat. Thank you for letting us know that. Wow, that's really cool. And then my buddy Chester, I saw him in here a couple days ago. Where'd he go? Chester, where are you at? Um, Sanjukta. Sanjukta says, um, oh, here it is. Sanjukta. Uh, how do to become a NASA historian? I am from India. Uh, how, how is this possible? So how do you become a NASA historian, a space historian? Well, Sanjukta, I got to tell you, this is a, that was a fantastic question. And you all, it was so worth it. Like, I'm glad you were so patient and hung out and, and stayed with and, and we went over this. Because this, the question that she asked, asked, how does she become a NASA historian when she's from India, is relevant to you. How do you do something when there's an obstacle in the way? First of all, you just, like, remember what our friend Story Musgrave says? 90% of, of success is showing up. And I always say 95% of success is showing up packed. So if you want something, you, gotta, you get to go to the place that you want to do it. Now, she said NASA, but listen, the ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, is doing such monumental work with space and space exploration that a NASA historian is amazing, but an ISRO historian, think about the, the important science developments that ISRO is doing and that are not being recorded or preserved. I think there's important, there's people that throw stuff away. It happened at NASA and there was employees that preserved the information and we have it now here in the future, but it would have been gone because it was 50 years ago that we did the Apollo mission and people saw stuff being thrown away and they're like, I can't let this be thrown away. It's too valuable. It'll be valuable in the future for the next generation, not for money, but for knowledge, for history. Like Sanjukta wants to be a, a, a NASA historian, but why not a space historian? And why not a space historian for the ISRO? So that's the answer to my question is I want to be a NASA historian. Well, what about, a, a, remember what, a, remember, I said, what about a, a historian for ISRO? Because remember what our, uh, our, not our friend, but remember what Arthur Ashe, the tennis pro said, he's passed away when he was the number one tennis player in the world and he came from very humble beginnings, he was asked, how do I become? No, when he became the champion, how did you become the champion? And Arthur Ashe answered, I started where I was. I worked with what I had and I did what I could. 
So if you want to be a NASA historian, become a fantastic historian at ISRO, and then NASA will bring you in as what is called an export, an expert. You'll be a, a, a space historian expert, and then all the space programs will want to work with you. Start where you are, work with what you have. So Sanjukta is in India, so she, India is what she gets to work with to start, and then do what you can, like send a letter. She, she should send a letter to K. Savan, so that, who, who is the director of the ISRO, and let her know, let them know that that's what she wants to do. Got it? Wow. We covered a lot of material today. Look what we covered. We covered what is possible. We covered that we can train for space in, the, in, in our own home, in our own, like Spaceship Studio was created just to create a spaceship training mission so that it shows what you is possible. Uh, we talked about analog astronauts and how you're an analog astronaut, how you training to be a, a good human being and thinking about how am I helping trains you to become the best astronaut, future space explorer, human air that is possible. You're listening and doing what we're doing together is really what's making all the difference in the world. You're making the world a better place just by participating. And I just want to say thank you. You make, you make a lot of difference to me. You mean the world to me. And I just want you to know that. No matter what else is going on in the world around us, remember that. Like we could be in a situation where we forget the important stuff. And the important stuff that I want you to remember is that you're awesome. You're amazing. And I love you. And you carry that forward because it's gonna be your turn to say the same thing to the future. And I, and I, and I don't know where I'll be then, but you can trust that I will be thinking well of you. I will be celebrating you no matter what, forever. Okay? Now, you know what we say when we say goodbye, when we say in closing. In the words of our people, Papa.